talking with the experts. So when I first started, I always thought, hey, you know what? And, and this is also the most common mistake, by the way, that most entrepreneurs make. I thought, I'm going to build a better mousetrap. And if you build a better mousetrap, the world will beat its way to your door, obviously, right? Wrong. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about what you're making. And there's probably 50 people that are doing it better than you are. Then what? Well, that's one way to do it. And you could build the most amazing thing of whatever you're doing. And maybe you are different. And maybe there's a huge demand for what you're making. But it's unlikely. And it's unlikely that even if you make something that's 10 times better than the other guy, if the other guy has better distribution, can tell a better story, that you're going to sell better than him. So how do we do it? Talking with the experts. Hello, my name is Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. And Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. And you can find it on all good podcasting streaming platforms and on YouTube. And I would encourage you to go and subscribe to the channel and Press on the bell so that you know when the next video is uploaded. And I would so appreciate that. Thank you. Today, my guest is Shaheen Shaheen, and he is um, uh, from Accelerated Intelligence. And we're going to be talking about success, Amazon coaching, business, and entrepreneurship. And Shaheen. Uh, family escaped from Iran during the revolution in 1978 and moved to, to uh, Los Angeles. And at 15, he left home with nothing but the clothes on his back and created over a billion dollars in revenue by inventing the legendary smart drug known, known as herbal ecstasy. Woohoo! <laughs> These childhood experiences had a major impact on his perspective of freedom, hard work and entrepreneurship. Later on in life, he went on to invent digital vaporization, which is the forerunner to today's vapes, which um, I'm a fan. <laughs> Love them. And um, he started a number of successful businesses with a couple of notable failures. Today, he is the founder and CEO of Accelerated Intelligence, a major Amazon um, seller with millions in sales and lead coach at Amazon Mastery, where he teaches entrepreneurs how to crush it on the Amazon platform and um, an active YouTube creator. Welcome, Shaheen. You have an impressive resume. Thank you for joining Thank you, me. Rose. Yeah, thank you. Honored to be on. Terrific. So tell me a little bit more about um, your uh, your inventions. My goodness, it's I've never had an inventor on before. So. My inventions, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, I started in the 1990s. I basically left home when I was 15, invented what was one of the biggest smart drugs at the time. You know, ecstasy was huge in the 1990s. MDMA, methyl dioxy, methamphetamine um, was a massive drug, but the quality of it had gone down all, all over the world. So what I did was I created a legal version of it. Now, mind you, I was a teen. I had no idea what I was doing. I walked into the clubs. I got the drug dealers to start selling my legal, natural, herbal supplements all over the world, including in Australia. And before my 18th birthday, 19th birthday, we got the news that we had broken over a billion dollars. Wow. in revenue. Wow. And I remember hearing that and panicking, not because it wasn't true, 
but panicking because I didn't know how much a billion dollars was. That was the level of my sophistication in those days. And I had a a crazy attorney who I had hired just on a lark. And this guy lived in a house with chickens. There was, uh, you know, the, the mob was in, interested. The Japanese mafia was interested in getting wow. involved in our business. And uh, Wall Street was interested in investing in us. And it was a crazy time. And I write about it in my upcoming book, which is coming out in August called Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult. And Rose, for any of your listeners, um, I do have a podcast called Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult, and it's all about the herbal ecstasy phenomena. So anybody that's interested, it's absolutely free. You can just look up Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult and listen to the first chapter of the book for free as well. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. So, yeah. then, so then why did, and then the digital vaporization, how did that come about? Right. So also in the 90s, I was always thinking that we have been as a culture igniting stuff, lighting it to 1200 degrees, causing it to combust and creating these carcinogenic elements, carcinogenic meaning cancer causing smoke, tar, and carbon monoxide being our worst enemies. Those are the things that cause cancer, but indigenous cultures, cultures that are native to the land, uh, those people have been using plant substances for years without very many ill side effects. So I, I decided to take a, a deeper look at, is there a way where we can utilize these plants, inhale them, because inhalation is a really great way to be able to absorb the active elements. It's a fantastic delivery system. The only problem is that we've just been burning it. It's a very barbaric way to get what we need into our system. So I developed vaporization. We patented, designed, developed, I wrote the book on it, all the founding technology for digital vaporization. And then we invented the first digital portable vaporizer that was battery operated. And we created a device that was able to release nicotine from tobacco, cannabinoids, THC from cannabis, uh, all kinds of active elements from all kinds of different plants. I mean, there's thousands of plants and you can really enjoy most of the benefits through vaporization and without creating any of those negative side effects. So that's what we did. And it was, it was very successful. That was a company that made millions and millions of dollars in its time. It went public on the stock exchange sometime around 2007. I, of course, exited just before then. But it was a, a very successful company and the forerunner to everything that you see now with people vaping and, and using that stuff, which, by the way, I'm not a fan of, <laughs> nor do I espouse the use of any in, inhaled stuff at the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm a great vapor. I gave up like smoking cigarettes and turned to vaping instead. Yeah. Just, so that's, you know, now I'm hooked and it's. It's my friend. <laughs> that's that's the that's the problem. It's deceptive because it's a lot lighter. It feels better. So you might guess, hey, maybe it is it is better. But the technology that I built actually, interestingly enough, Rose, just use plants. So here's the deal with that. And I was just on Adam Carolla's show. Adam Carolla is a big uh, uh, TV host here in Los Angeles. And I was explaining to him how vaporization works. So the stuff that I developed, you put a plant, let's take cannabis because cannabis is legal here. Now, is it legal in Australia? No, not yet. It's not legal. Yeah. Australia is really hard with anything plant wise. I don't know why mm. that is, but um, so cannabis is legal here. So we can talk about it. So uh, you take a plant like cannabis and you put it in a digital vaporizer as a whole plant or tobacco. We can talk about tobacco. Tobacco is legal there. Now, if you heat it up to just somewhere between 300 and 350 degrees, and you do that for a length of time, you tend to get all of the nicotine out of the tobacco. If it was cannabis, you'd get the cannabinoids and the THC out, but it's just over 400, 450 where it starts to burn. So if you can figure out the perfect temperature, all you're getting is the essential elements that you need from that plant relatively safe. Mind you, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I am two steps below a chimpanzee. So for any of your 
audience listening to this, I am not in the practice of giving medical advice. And of course, consult with your doctor. I don't espouse anybody do anything uh, no, with talking to yeah. a doctor. But with that said, relatively safe way, what we invented. Now, what happened was the first vapor, vaporizer vape device that we built was large. It was the size of a ketchup bottle and it took big lithium batteries and it was a big big thing. And we sold them all day long. It costs us about $40 to make. We sold them for $400. We sold them all day and all night. We couldn't keep them in stock long enough because people had no choice. We were the only option. You could smoke, you could use ours. Then as time went by, people started demanding, you know, phones got smaller, people, computers got smaller, laptops got smaller. People wanted their electronic devices smaller. So we got it down into a smaller ketchup bottle and a smaller bottle, and then something that was flat and like disc shaped. And then we finally got it to a thing that, you know, put the vape in a bag. And then we got it to something the size of a cigar. And people really wanted to have that feeling of it being in a cigarette. Now, the problem comes when you get something that small, you still have to produce heat and heat is expensive as far as physics go. To create heat is one of the most energy intensive systems. So you need batteries. So instead of solving that problem, what ended up happening in the industry is they found a, a substance, a substrate that they could use something uh, like glycerin and these other elements. And they could just put some of the THC or some of the tobacco, some of the nicotine elements onto that substrate, and that would volatilize in very low heat. So they wouldn't need massive batteries. They could do it with these little lithium watch batteries and make it into the shape of a little cigarette. Now that's all nice and good. Again, it's one of the things that you know leads to innovation and it being very small and portable, and you can charge it with your computer and all those wonderful things. But at the same time, you're no longer using just the plant substance. You've mm -hmm. got some other element in there that's untested in the human lungs. And that's why I don't espouse it. I think it's, it's, it's unknown what the effects of all these carriers of elements are. So now you're saying, okay, so now I am not smoking, which is great, Rose. You're not getting smoke, tar, carbon monoxide. However, what you are getting is whatever is in that carrier that they're using to deliver the nicotine into your lungs. And that is probably the biggest problem with, you know, vaporization right now. Now, in the foreseeable future, presumably somebody could solve that problem. And that's a problem that, of course, as humanity, we could solve. I don't believe that as a society that we have to just say no to everything. Like there's, there's ways where we can work around that and fix it. But for the time being, as, as being the person that was the forerunner and inventor of a lot of this technology, um, I don't espouse the use of it because I, I'm not sure how safe it is. Mm. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard different stories about the oils and, and whatever that you're using, you know, the glycerin and, the, and whatever. So they put holes in your lungs and all sorts of things. But we're getting a little bit off topic. So, but thank you for sharing how the vaporizer and the sure. vape machine came to being because it's, it's quite interesting. I, You don't sort of think of someone inventing it, you know, you, you just think, well, it's just there. And so, well, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing story. So tell me a little bit more about Amazon coaching. How can people get and learn how to use Amazon to its best advantage, to, to, their, to their best advantage? Yeah, absolutely. So you had Herbal Ecstasy, which I did, which is a phenomena, created over a billion dollars in revenue in its time, globally marketed and advertised. And you guys can check that out on that podcast that I gave you. We'll include it in the show links also. And from there, went on to vaporization. That company went public. And I was looking for the next big thing to do. Well, turns out this little guy named Jeff Bezos is launching something called Seller Central, which allows third-party sellers like yourself and me from anywhere in the world to sell their products as a seller on the Amazon platform, just like on eBay, where it's not eBay selling the item, it's you. On Amazon, Bezos said, let's open it up. Not only that, Bezos went out of his way to one more. He poached one, allegedly, I should say, poached one of the top logistics people from Walmart, allegedly. And that person 
created what's now Amazon FBA, which is fulfillment by Amazon, warehouses all over the world. And you no longer as a seller have to worry about picking, packing, shipping, weighing, any of that stuff. You ship a pallet, cases of your product to Amazon, Amazon will handle that part of it. You just figure out how to make a great product and sell it. I thought this is brilliant. So I, at the time, I was working on a brain supplement called Accelerol, which by the way, you can't get it in Australia, but you can get it in the States. So if, if anyone's listening in Australia, have a friend bring it for you in their suitcase. But Accelerol is fantastic. It, it's a brain pill that you use for mental acuity and, and other things. Again, no claims, but that's what I use it for. And I put it up on there. It was 130 bucks, expensive supplement. I didn't think anything of it. I went to sleep. I woke up. We had thousands of orders. And I thought, man, there's something to this. Amazon is going to blow up. No one's selling on there right now. Let me learn everything I can about this and become one of the top guys. So we did. And that was probably somewhere around 2010. And ever since I've been launching companies, products, businesses on Amazon, I've been coaching people how to do it from all over the world. I've got people in Australia, people in South Africa. We've got people in the United Arab Emirates all over the world who start businesses selling on Amazon, creating predictable recurring revenue streams where they can make money when they're sleeping, which is really what is most important to people. What you want to do is increase your time that you spend with your family, that you spend with your friends, that you spend enjoying the things that you want to do and make the time where you're working and creating income more profitable for yourself without selling your hours. And I talk about this with people all the time. You want to get away from selling your hours. So how do you do that? Well, you have to think Rose foundationally. And we talk about foundational thinking. You have to have four pillars. A table with four legs is super strong. Three legs, it could still stand, but you know maybe not as strong as four legs. Two legs, you don't have a very good table. And one leg, good luck to you, buddy, right? So the first leg, you should have a job, something that supports you, that pays your bills. Maybe you're selling your hours. Whatever it is, it keeps your family fed. It keeps you in stability. That's always the first pillar. The second pillar is you should have some investments. Hopefully, you're investing in the stock market. You're compounding interest. People like Warren Buffett created great wealth because they've been investing so long, one of the wealthiest men in the world. You want to have some investments going. The third pillar, I believe, is cash flow real estate. You should be thinking about real estate. You don't have to necessarily own it. There's ways to rent it and lease it out, uh, sell contracts on it, something having to do with real estate, preferably cash flow real estate that you do own that brings in recurring revenue. Somebody else pays your mortgage. Super important. If you don't do it or if it feels far away, you should be working towards that. And the fourth pillar is you should have an e-commerce business. I don't know how things are in Australia right now, but in the United States, real estate is through the roof. So that tells us now may not be a good time to buy real estate. So what do you do? Move on to one of the other pillars. It is a spectacular time now to start an Amazon business. And we teach people how to do that every day here, how you can start from nothing. You don't need very much money to do it. You can do it from anywhere in the world. And you start a business identifying products, private labeling them, selling them, to the millions of Amazon customers who want to get them delivered to their house with Prime every day. And you can set this up in 30 days and get it going with very little money. And we actually, we've got a course, if it's okay with you, Rose, mm, um, it's, normally, it's, it's normally $200. I'm happy to share it for free with anybody in your audience at, at absolutely zero cost. They just use the code talking, to, talking with the experts. If they use that code, let us know. And the URL for that is fbasellercourse.com, or they can just email me directly or reach out to me on WhatsApp. We answer all messages. I reply to every email directly, and we'll share my email also 
If anybody wants to reach out and they're interested in that, it's a two hour course. And what it does is it teaches you from A to Z, how to start selling on the Amazon platform and making money. And there's zero cost to it. And you'll be surprised how quick it is, even if you're overseas, to start a US company. Things in the US are super easy to do. And we teach you the right jurisdiction to open up that company. It only costs you know, a couple hundred dollars to start a US company. Those are just government fees and the taxes are very low every year. And you can start a great company, identify great products and sell the market, the products that it needs. And in the meanwhile, be traveling the world like I do with my family and making money while you sleep, which is the name of the game. Yes, yeah, so a lot of people want to make money while they're asleep. And for service-based businesses like mine, because podcasting is not my bread and butter, um, yeah, it's hard to uh, try and make money while you sleep unless you've got an evergreen course or something um, that, you know, people will buy into. And, it, you know, so the courses don't suit everybody. So it's it's hard to to sometimes niche whatever it is you're trying to sell as a service-based business. So, yeah, yeah that's it, right. A challenging yeah. and, and there's no real platforms to sell unless you go to Kajabi or one of those other trading platforms which cost an arm and a leg for someone who's just starting out as a service-based business. So, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a long road to, to travel. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Amazon sells products and doesn't sell services. So, Yeah, well, services are difficult because you are selling your hours. So unless, unless you've got, uh, you know, a business plan, and I coach people through this stuff all the time, and, you know, any of your listeners are always free to contact me. I'm, I'm delighted to have a conversation with them and see how I can help them. But you want to get away from selling your hours, Rose. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, selling your hours is a distraction. And, you know, I don't know much, but what I do know is that no matter who you are, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Rose Davidson, or Shaheen Shayan, you've got the same amount of hours. Yeah. We all have 24 hours. They don't make them. I know Elon tried. He tries to sleep on the floor and, and he's been trying to invent new hours for a long time. And I know people talk about quantum theory and whatnot, and we won't get into that, but there really is not a way to create more hours. So what you have to do is learn how to be more efficient with the hours that you have. And we teach that. We teach that at Amazon Mastery. We teach how you use virtual assistants. We've got amazing people. We just hired a new virtual assistant in Nicaragua. Nicaragua is one of these great places where they have these amazing call centers, great quality of education, fantastic quality of life. People are doing really well, but you know, seven, $8 an hour is a fortune there. And they do really well with that. And you will get people that are loyal and you can use other people's hours. You will get people that are MBA quality, people that are experts in their field, great at doing all those little things that in places like the US and Australia, you might have to pay $15, $20 an hour, plus health insurance, plus benefits, plus, plus, plus. So we teach how to do that, how to outsource, how to use somebody else's hours while bringing them up in life and helping them. All our staff loves us. You know, we sent, uh, we've got a whole team in the Philippines and we sent them all brand new laptops and they're all taking pictures with their laptops and, 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 you know, the whole village comes down and uses their laptops and they're like the Kings and Queens of the village because, because we did that for them and it builds loyalty. So these are all little hacks that you can do where you can start building a team overseas that can run your business for you. But if your business is not scalable, if your business depends on you and only you to operate it, it cannot be sold. And if that's the case, I mean, at the very least, it can't be sold without you. You need to start looking for another pillar. That's okay. But what you don't have is a business. What you have is a job. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a very good point, actually. I always thought, you know, when I first started, my job was a my business was a hobby because I wasn't getting any any sales. And then I started making sales, but you're right, it is a job, it's something that I turn up to and I, I quite love what I do. So you know, to me it doesn't feel like a job, but you know, you're right, it is, if you really look at it, um, you know, theoretically, I guess. Yeah, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I said. You know, the first pillar you got to remember is stability. 
you need stability. I get a lot of people who are interested in our course. You know, the word gets out that people are making money and I get all kinds of people every day. I'm on the phone with people. And I had a guy uh, a couple of days ago called me up and it's like, Shaheen, please let me in your course. And, you know, he had done our two hour crash course and got super excited about selling on Amazon. I said, great. And he starts, you know, talking about how uh, he can't get groceries for his family next week, but he's got a credit card and he's going to buy the course on a credit card. And I looked at him and I said, buddy, you don't need my course. And he said, what? What do you, what do you, I'm ready to buy. I want to buy your course. And I said, you don't need my course. He goes, what do you mean? I said, you need Uber. He said, what? Uber? I said, yeah, you need to go out there and drive Uber until you have a surplus of $5,000, $10,000 in the bank, and you are comfortable. There's no question where your next meal is coming from, where your baby's diapers are coming from, where your family's groceries are coming from. You have that stability because with stability comes power, and you are more relaxed, and you can act from a place of power. And when you act from a place of power, it's much more impactful. It's much more effective, and you can impact and affect success in a much more meaningful way than if you're coming from a place of neediness, if you're desperate. It's the equivalent of like a desperate person going to a casino table and throwing their last hundred dollars on the, you know, what do you, the roulette wheel, hoping that it lands on their number. We don't want to do that. We don't play that game. The game we play at Amazon Mastery is we teach people, hey, You might have to put one on red, one on green, one on this number, one on that number, and it might hit. But if it doesn't, it's okay because then we have a second follow-up strategy. And if that doesn't work, we have a second follow-up strategy. But you need to have enough length in your comfort zone to be able to achieve that. And until you do, there is no shame in in doing whatever it takes to to be comfortable, to feed your family, and to make sure that you have a surplus so you come at it from a place of abundance and a place of strength. Absolutely, yes. Manifesting abundance is all about positive mindset and, and has everything to do with negative mindset and negative self-talk and the uh, the. the thinking of lack because if you think of lack you'll always have lack so yeah i i'm a great believer in manifesting with positive thoughts yeah yeah so i guess um for for somebody who's just starting out uh maybe you know someone who's like yourself you know 15 17 18 what are the first steps that you believe would be um advantageous for them to to start doing to uh, you know, get their product out in the marketplace. Right. So when I first started, I always thought, hey, you know what? And, and this is also the most common mistake, by the way, that most entrepreneurs make. I thought, I'm going to build a better mousetrap. And if you build a better mousetrap, the world will beat its way to your door, obviously. Right? Wrong. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about what you're making. And there's probably 50 people that are doing it better than you are. Then what? Well, that's one way to do it. And you could build the most amazing thing of whatever you're doing. And maybe you are different. And maybe there's a huge demand for what you're making. But it's unlikely. And it's unlikely that even if you make something that's 10 times better than the other guy, if the other guy has better distribution, can tell a better story, that you're going to sell better than him. So how do we do it? So here we go. I'm I'm just going to pull back the curtain behind what we do at Amazon Mastery and, and let you in to how we do things. We seek distribution first. We look at the channel in which we are going to be selling and we see what the market demands. Then we create a product to feed that demand. We tell a better story. That's it. That's all we do. If you can imagine you've got hungry crocodiles, you just throw chickens at them. It's easy. Now you can go out there and say, hey, I'm going to create a gourmet you know, chicken nugget that's going to be delicious and crocodile design. And stuff. They don't care. They want chickens and as many as they can get as quickly as they can get. So that's what we do. We find what the market needs, what it desperately has to have. We find vulnerabilities in the market. We find where other people are weak, and we exploit those weaknesses by telling a better story, 
by creating more value. And that's it. That's all you have to learn how to do. And again, for anybody that's interested of your listeners, you know, reach out to us, get the one hour crash course and really learn all the secrets of how to do this. And we do this by using the elements of influence. So there's a professor, a guy named Robert Caldini. Have you heard of Caldini before? I've, but um, it's been around, but yeah, I've not uh, yeah. delved into his, his work or anything. Sure. So Caldini wrote the book Influence and his follow-up book, Persuasion. And Caldini is just amazing. And he talks about the five pillars of influence. Social proof. What's social proof on Amazon? Reviews. How do you get reviews? Likeability. Is your product corporate and I am the blah, blah, blah? Or are you friendly? Do you sound, Rose, like my best friend? Scarcity. Can I get it everywhere? Is there a limited quantity available? We all know that when something is scarce, we want it more. Consistency. Are you consistent? Is your message consistent? And also as a consumer, is it consistent with what I want? And reciprocity. Does it give me something that I feel obliged to give back to? So if you have these elements in place, and you can apply them to the algorithm of Amazon, you will see incredible sales. And, you know, I've got students that are doing five grand to 10 grand a month. And I know people that are doing 50 to 150 grand a month on Amazon. And that's dollars, US dollars. It's very doable. Amazon is wide open now. And people are, are constantly asking me, they're like, oh, isn't it too saturated? Isn't it too late to get in the Amazon game? And really, the answer is there is no better time than now. And there's a lot of people that are going to miss out on this rush because right now is not the time to get into real estate. That market is in a bubble all over the world. Real estate prices are unreasonably high because of, yeah, because through the roof because of COVID. And there's been a flight to security and people didn't know where to put their money. And a lot of people were sitting on money and they just jumped in to buy real estate. And those prices have gone through the roof. So invest in a business, invest in something that can increase in value and bring you this recurring revenue. And then when real estate goes down, it always does from the dawn of time to now, then you can come in. And as they say, when there's blood on the streets, buy real estate. There will be an opportunity when the market crashes for you to come back and then build that third pillar, build that recurring real estate revenue. And then you'll never have a bad day. You wake up one day, the real estate market's down, your Amazon business will be on fire. You know, you wake up one morning and Amazon's a little slow because people aren't buying physical products, goods. I've never seen that happen, but let's say that happens. Your real estate will be doing great. If that doesn't happen, you've got the other two pillars. Your investments are doing great. So you got to spread yourself out. You got to make sure that you're well diversified and that you're playing a foundational game, a long term game. You know, a lot of people talk about getting rich quick, and we live in such a short-term ADD kind of society. But I like to tell people, we teach people how to get rich slow. Yes. Getting rich quick sometimes has its drawbacks, doesn't it? To say, yeah. Like you didn't know what a million dollars was, a billion dollars was, you know, it's, that's quite scary. <laughs> so Shaheen, your book's out in October. Do you want in to August, share? August. In August, book's out sorry. In August. Yeah, yeah, so this so, month. Yeah, this month. Well done. So can you uh, share with us again what the title is? Yeah, absolutely. We got it right here. So the book's called Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult. You can order it on Amazon. It'll be on Kindle. If you guys uh, read books on Kindle, the audiobook will be available on Audible and anywhere audiobooks are found. We have a podcast. I also do a weekly podcast with my co-host Bart Baggett called Hack and Grow Rich. So please check that out. We always have great guests, people like Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari. We've got Jay Samet, author of Future Proof You. We've had a lot of amazing guests on and we will continue. We've got Chris Voss, the FBI negotiator coming up, author of Never Split the Difference. He wrote the forward to my book, Billion. So please check us out. Just go to YouTube, look up Hack and Grow Rich. Make sure to subscribe. 
And if there's any other way we can provide value to you, please make sure to check out our one hour course, absolutely free for listeners of talking with the experts and Rose Davidson. And you can check that out on FBA sellercourse.com and rose will include that in the show notes for you i will do thank you shahi it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today and uh, a wealth of information about the uh, the four pillars that you know we all need to to embrace to uh, make ourselves a success thank you rose pleasure to be on thank you for having me bye bye